The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, and help me welcome uh, Elizabeth Van Twyl from, uh, from Ward 4. Ward 4, yes. And you're running for... Uh, State representative. That's good. Yes, it Wait. is very good. And you've been on the Board of Education for quite eight, a while. Yes, yes, Carl, eight years. It eight was years. a wonderful experience, except for the last two were kind of touch uh -huh, and go. But uh -huh. uh, I I would recommend anybody running for it if, if they have a good love for education. Right. Um, it... it it, I really felt great because I felt like I had a part in helping out these children. Um, uh, I, I tutored two, two uh, people at uh, two kids at Amherst Street, and I tutored uh, some after school at Dr. Chris. Oh, Crisp. really? I didn't and, know that. Yeah, and it was very, very rewarding. Yeah. And even if you don't run for for that position, you can help out and. It's just a gift that you give, give these kids. Um, I, I, I really thought afterwards that maybe I should have gone into education instead <laughs> of the computer industry, but I had a very good career. You know, I had uh -huh. 40 years in the computer industry uh -huh. uh, working for Digital Equipment Corporation in, initially as a software engineer, uh -huh. a technical writer, and um, also a course developer. Oh. And um, I, I just loved that job. It was just wonderful. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about m how I actually came about mm -hmm. doing that. You know, back in the 50s, 60s, uh, things were a lot easier to get mm -hmm. an education. Um, I, I, I applied at the University of, of Gainesville, Florida at Gainesville, and couldn't get in because I, they accepted me, but I didn't have enough money. Mm -hmm. And so I went out and worked for a while. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a, a degree in um, a Two-year degree, great mm -hmm. way of, of getting starting, the, starting yeah. without a right. ton of money. And then I worked for a while in the computer industry for the Air Force, and then I went back to school. Uh -huh. And it, I, for me, it was the best thing because I think at, at that age, I was ready to learn. Uh -huh. uh, and so um, my whole education cost me $3,000. And I, uh -huh. today I just gasp at these children who come out that's with nice. $50,000 and greater. Yeah. And I think that's so wrong. Yeah. So really wrong. It really bothers the heck out of me that um, education. Now, after working on the school board, I would suggest that you don't have to go to college. Yeah. Uh, I think you get a better rounded person if you've gotten that extra education. Mm -hmm. But, um, th you know, the um, uh an auto mechanic today can yeah. make like oh, yeah. $70,000 right. a year. Can you mm -hmm. believe that? Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to this fellow who I've hired to do my yard work for me. And I says, you know, uh, you always have a job. Yeah. People need the cars, right. uh, their yard work done. They need the plumbing done. They need, the, you know, a restaurant. Of course, right now we're, mm -hmm. we're losing a lot of those people sure. who've lost their jobs. Um <coughs> So, uh, you know, I would encourage children to or young people to go into those fields today unless you have a desire to be on a stock market or financial mm -hmm. advisor mm -hmm. or something like that. So um, it's kind of fun uh, to know that you had a part in, in some made some influence on, um, in these kids. Um, but anyways, that's why I have a passion for education. Mm -hmm. I know how important it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel that it is your your way out of poverty if you if you come from people who don't have much money, and um, besides, it's just so exciting to learn about whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Like you I mean take the human body. It's I mean how intricate it is and how our system works together. Mm -hmm. You know the ecosystem and everything. So I can't imagine. Um, I, I'd like to go back and teach maybe, but I. I've, I've done my part, I think, on that. Well, one of the things, if you get elected, you'll be teaching some of the people. Well, there. hopefully, yes, hopefully. Uh, and that's the other thing, too. I think people have lost their um, their uh, interest in, in getting the right thing mm -hmm. for, for children in, in education. Uh, they're looking more for power. Mm -hmm. 
um, than they are for being really concerned. You know, the whole eight years that I worked on the Board of Education, um, the children have these state tests that test them mm -hmm. uh, uh, for their English reading and, mm -hmm. and math. Mm -hmm. Every year, those mm -hmm. went down. Mm -hmm. Every year. All the money that we pour into it, doing the budget, we never cut the budget lower than what it was the year before. And and yet these grades keep going down. And that's one of the biggest biggest things that um, bothers me the most. So is you couldn't tie that in. What what was different? To figure what it was different? Yeah. Don't ask me. Uh -huh. I couldn't get that notice. The last year I was on the board, couldn't even get the figures. No kidding. Yes, the... the uh, the school de department gets them first, like in, in uh, I don't know, early yeah. June or something like that. The board can get them after that in October because they have some kind of j jury rigging they're doing to get people situated in the right groups or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, they make themselves look better. Well, yes. And, and you know, until the, until the uh, uh, teachers union smartens up, yeah. They're going to be losing all kinds of... Well, is it the teacher's union or is it the well, superintendent? They, I mean, it's both. It's both. And they're working together. The, well, you know, <laughs> I mean, they, so I, I guess. Um, I wasn't the president of the uh, board, yeah. so I don't have that direct interest, right. uh, direct, con you know, conversations. But uh, there's got to be something. I, I never figured it out. I thought maybe that... Um, they have these the children who have IEPs and uh -huh. 504s um, that sway the figures, but they will not separate those out and say this is the average group of people and this is the scores that they made and these are our, our uh, special needs students. That to me would be honest and, uh -huh, and open, uh -huh, uh -huh. but we never could seem to get that. So um, that's because it didn't look good. Though. Well. I, I can't imagine, you know, teachers that that um, would want that, you know, just to protect themselves. And there is, I think, a little bit of uh, fear that they're going to be chastised because they haven't, the, the, their class didn't do as well. Mm -hmm. And I wish that they would get that away. One of the things I loved about working at Digital Equipment Corporation was the fact that it was okay to fail. Yeah. And and but just don't do it again, you know. Uh, well, Learn you know, from or, or the same thing again. Right. And and that gives you such a sense of confidence right. that you're not going to lose your job. Right. Uh, that you know that and and that you have this relationship with us with your principal that you both are working towards the same goal right. is improving yourselves and getting these students. The first year I was on the board, I had a committee. I was chair of the committee for um, an ad hoc committee to set some goals. Mm -hmm. One of the toughest things that, that we really couldn't get past was the fact that a child, uh, if they don't learn by the third grade to read and write yeah. well, then they're behind right. all the rest of us. But we could not get them to hold these children back. To the, you Really? Know, no. They would not. That, that would went over like a lead balloon, believe me. And uh, mostly they would say it's the parents that will complain about it. So? And, so yeah. <laughs> you're doing your job. <laughs> well, yeah, but you've got to be convincing. You can't alienate them, the, uh -huh. the, the parent, you know. Uh -huh. So uh, that was hard to get across. And, and I think that it's, it's critical. It's just critical that the kid, when you open up to reading, just think of the world that you have here. Take them down to the library. And they have the whole world's knowledge there. And uh, if they can't read, I had uh, my favorite pizza parlor guy. Uh -huh. hired somebody that was educated in Nashua. He said, he came up to me one time when I was ordering a pizza, put his arm around me, he says, he says, I hired this kid and he can't even read my menu. I could not believe that. Could not believe that. Really? Yeah. And um, this, this young kid that I tutored in the fourth grade, he had to look up in a chart, in a book, how much four times three was. I said, you got to be kidding me. So, you know, we have, we do very well. Really, we do have a good, good system, but there are pockets that are, need to be improved. Well, that's what I always heard. And I, I interviewed the superintendent once. And, oh, did you? Uh, uh, I had some questions because I had heard how many people had graduated and uh, couldn't pass the incoming uh uh, community college path. Uh, yeah, we've test. had that. Yes, I heard that. And I, the, the last time I heard I that uh, was probably four years ago. And uh -huh. after that, 
uh, uh, no no information. At, they have to give all. them remedial training. Yeah. Yep, it's well. They even changed the titles of the courses at the co community college. There's no no one that's the title the remedial reading or re remedial oh, well, math. That might be politically incorrect, you know. Well, <laughs> that's that's what the trouble is, though. You're yeah, hiding it. You're hiding it, and, and there's and, no. I love the stories about these older people that have not been able to read and mm -hmm. start reading again. Mm -hmm. And I think, look at all that yes. you have lost during yes. this year. Right. And I think about the kid who can't add well or, or can't do simple math. Mm -hmm. How do they take care of their budget, their budget, their checking account? You know, how do they make change? You know, well, so, they use a calculator. <laughs> that's all they know how to use. They push buttons and oh, and that's it on their phone or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but the other question I asked is, how come you weren't giving uh, 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 writing lessons? You know, well, cursive is a yeah. big thing for me. Yeah, I say, how come if you don't teach them cursive, how can they read the con the de how can independence? They <laughs> uh, our, our constitution. Yeah. That's the other and thing it, I would it, like to give a plug on, is that uh, during this period of time that I've been sitting around the house, I took a course at Hillsdale College. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, wonderful course. Oh, yeah. They're You're free. Right. Right. It was on the Constitution, and then it was on the, the um, Federalist Papers. Uh -huh. And they have a, a new course out f uh, for children's reading literature that I want to take. And uh, they're free. Uh -huh. They will ask you for a donation right. to kind of hound you a little bit but yeah. you can ignore it if you like or, or you can do it right. they also do wonderful interviews on the youtube uh -huh. uh, the uh, department the uh, uh, mr Barr yeah uh was on there excellent excellent mm -hmm. man uh, this man from the hoover institute is excellent they had one on the new uh the nominee for the the um supreme court mm -hmm. so i want to give a big plug for them because they really made my summer go by a lot f more fun. And I was not a history lover oh. when I was in high school. Uh -huh. So um, I, it was a good time to start picking that up. But I want to encourage them, the, the, particularly the Federalist Papers, because it t explains to you why the Founding Fathers right. wrote these things into our Constitution. The way they did, yeah. The way they did, and it, it helps you understand right. why we have the mm -hmm. uh, Electoral College. Mm -hmm. And this 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 uh, government that we have now is not anything like what they intended. We need to scale back on, those, on, on these bureaucracies. Mm -hmm. Look at the mess we've had with right. the way... The CDC has given out bad or poor information, and well, you got different units doing the same thing. So yes, you're going to, people don't understand. They think science is so straightforward. It's not it's straightforward. Not forward, no, everybody has a different opinion, and the egos are in there. Something's bad. Well, that is <laughs> that's one of the points from the Federalist Papers uh -huh. that they they knew that humans. You know, we're biased, right. and they were power hungry, and and so they built the three different sections of our government to help protect that. So, the other one that I want to give a plug for it too is a, a website called Open the Books. Mm -hmm. It is dynamite. Mm -hmm. All kinds of information on really? salaries and how we spent money here. Oh, you can on the coronavirus, yeah. on the virus, how much money has been spent. So, okay, those are all my. All my. Um, oh, do you get the Mosa. Hillsborough uh, monthly? Uh, well, you know, I don't know why I don't, but I did sign up for it again. Hopefully, I'll get the the yeah. monthly. Yeah, it's, it's still. It's well, it's conservative. Let's. Oh, yeah. I, the one I the, what I like about Hillsborough College, they've been around for a hundred and something years. Yeah. They don't take one dime from the United right. States government. Right. Not one dime. It's all public money right. that people have supported. I yeah. did donate no. to them. And um, to me, that's admirable that you're not living off the federal government. When you hear that, I heard today that New York City gets 15, I don't know how many billions of dollars from the federal government. If you can't, if you cannot yeah. uh, manage your, your state yeah. uh, on your own income or your own, in, you know, taxes, don't ask me to, to and California is the same way. So anyways, the other thing that I want to talk about is the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the police. I oh, I support okay. the pe the police. I think we have the finest police yeah. department in this city. Yeah. Absolutely respect them. You know what I respect about them? 
they all are physically fit. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not physically fit, but I love that about them. And I have never, ever They've been, been very polite. To very people. polite. And the other thing about them is, you know, the whole time we were, I was on the board, we had not one black person mm. kicked out. Not mm -hmm. one. Not that ever came before the board to be um, taken care of. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say taken care of. I'm going to get a lot of comments <laughs> on these things. And the Latinos? Yeah. Yes, we did, but not the blacks. Never. Mm. They're only 13, they were 13% of the school yeah. population, anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of this black, I, I, everybody black matters, person. but the black yeah. people matter. You know, I, I, I don't understand because. Police don't come to my house with a warrant yeah. and their guns, you know, right. ready to shoot. Right. Uh, and I don't have a boyfriend that's going to sit and, and, and shoot a policeman right then. You know, so there's something different here. How come it doesn't happen, you know, doesn't happen to me and it happens to somebody else? So, Well, that's I'll a situation. That Life's different on different mm -hmm. places. You have to respect that. But at the same well, time, you have to respect yes, I, the law. Yes, that's just it. And I think that's the difference that when we grew up, we were told to respect the right. law. And if they told you to do something, you did it. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that others do not do that, and they cause more trouble. We and they think of themselves, of. too, as victims. Yes. That's one of the things that really the schools should be building the, you know, the ego of the people so that they have some belief in themselves. Well, the, the new chief of police came to the board with a black lady mm -hmm. to to talk to us about allowing them to come in and talk with the students, mm -hmm. which I thought was a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I remember my little uh, reader book, you know, with with a policeman in it, you know, that he's your friend. He's not going there to hurt you. He's there to save you or, or to help you. And that, I think, is very, very important. Uh, um, I, I've just... I kind of do shake a little bit when they, if I have to, uh, if I, they come to my house and that's happened twice, uh, not because of what I did, but yeah. because, you know, I had a kid that jumped the fence and uh -huh. another kid that demolished my, some, uh, my property a little bit. So, uh, you know, I get a little, a yeah. little nervous about it, but I, I don't, I'm not conf afraid of them and yeah. I wouldn't run from them. Yeah. And I, and the, the fact that the, that policeman put his, you know, chokehold was despicable, just yeah. despicable. Yeah. But there are only a few of those That's kind right. of policemen. Yeah. So and that was my other topic. Now, I, yeah, the, the uh, you know, Black Lives Matter thing everybody's, bothers me. Yeah. Everybody, as you said, everybody's, everybody's life, life matters. And uh, look, if you're looking for somebody who's even worse than you, you ought to look at the American Indian that's still on the reservation. Have you seen some of the information where they have to live? I mean, they have to get water delivered to them because they're so isolated. Uh -huh. they, they're in an area that isn't the best land, and how they're trying to make a living on it, I don't know. But uh, there, are all, there are all sorts of things, and they have to go to, uh, to get educated. They have to go off the reservation, so that means, you know, like a one or two hour drive every, or the, a bus picks them up, and it's the whole day. But they are different areas that, uh, uh, I've well, seen. I've got information it, on. Yeah, I, I think that um, I think this has really brought to light a lot of mm -hmm. uh, prejudice in people, um, and I ex I admit that it must exist. But I don't consider myself a racist. I don't know anybody that's a racist. I, I mean, I've had some friends that are, are black and mm -hmm. very competent. Mm -hmm. What I am uh, against is incompetence. That bothers me. Yeah. And I have to say I'm biased about certain people who are just plain incompetent. Mm -hmm. But um, but you should be able to try to reach out to them. I think that's why we have uh, these charter schools, too. Everybody learns differently. Everybody handles differently, react to different instructions differently. And you got to find a home for them. And uh, that was one of the things I asked the uh, uh, superintendent in my interview, is to whether or not he actually went to any charter schools because they're technically under his supervision. Uh, and he had, and he didn't look at it to, that he would learn anything. Well, that's, yeah, that's kind of an interesting uh, arrangement. Uh, when... The school, when you send your child to a charter school, a charter school and they their home basis is uh, Nashua, Nashua has to pay for 
traffic, uh, getting yeah. them back there and forth. If there's special needs, they have to take care of that. And, but yet they don't have to answer to the superintendent. I've never heard anything about these. But then he doesn't even try to uh, have a communication. Well, I, I think part of that is because this, the New Hampshire Department of Education, I do not think, puts enough emphasis on that. And, you know, I, I started out being dyed in the wool for public education when I got on that board. But now I'm not that way anymore. And if I figure if you don't get the kind of education yeah. for your child that you need, send them to the uh, charter school because the money follows the child. Right, right. And that's the way it should be. Right. And then maybe, uh, you know, maybe the school department will smarten up and, and say, you know, we're losing a lot of these kids course you know they probably would like a little relief in, in some of them anyways because this is a huge district huge yeah. district. oh yeah and there's so many different people that come into it that aren't prepared either whether it's language or uh homes you know and some of them don't have a home or whatever yeah uh but uh you ought to be able to take care of some of that and you know treat some differently and they they're trying to put them all in one group and that this is the one method fits all type of problem. right yeah and that's not right oh well, it's not and um then you have the teachers who are just there to correct a, collect a paycheck oh yeah i don't know that we have a lot of those in this in our district but um that's well, even worse when when you can't give the child and some dinner. of the some of them have Problems that come with aging, let me say. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> wish I know could about say now that. <laughs> because uh, I've gone through of it. But we had that problem with one of my daughters when she was paid. To, she paid for a summer course, mm -hmm. or we paid for, her, and the woman was past her capabilities. And all they could do at first was to give me my money back because we were just very upset about it. At least we could talk to the principal uh -huh. and eventually they were able to have her retire, yeah. which she should have done probably yeah. a couple of years before that. Well, we have some in the United States Congress that are 84 <laughs> years right. old. I just heard today and I couldn't <laughs> believe it because uh, she's on the uh, committee that's going to be interviewing the new, well, new recommendation for the Supreme Court. I said, she's 84 years old. I mean, folks, come on. It's time for you to take a nap. <laughs> I'll tell you a one long thing. Nap. <laughs> one of the representatives that I replaced in Ward One. Oh, really? Was ninety. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, you know there are some people that are are, are very competent. It's she still been there for twenty years or something or other. Well, you know yeah. there's who some who still have their faculties that mm -hmm. uh, uh, can do it, still do a good job, but um, I think there needs to be some of those at the federal level that need to be voted out. I really do. Mm -hmm. It's time for them to take a siesta and let the young kids. Well, after this past in. year, I get to, I feel a little bit like that too. <laughs> Give them a term on it or something. Well, yeah. I, 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 I never I, thought that I'd say that. No, me neither. <laughs> I never thought I'd get this age either. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a sad thing what we're going through. I can't believe any mayor of any city that would allow oh, this yeah. destruction going on. Why in the world? It, they certainly won't be voted back in the next time. I'm positive of that because people like to be safe. I mean, that's the only thing the federal government is supposed to do for you. Well, you have to see as few of those people being fired by not being reelected that before it will take. Well, that's another thing, too. The, there are some people that should be in jail already yeah. from the federal government that... Uh, uh, I, I, it just scares me what's going on now. Uh, I'm a constitutionalist, a convers, a con, uh, conservative constitutionalist, mm -hmm. and I, after taking the the Federalist course, I could see where from FDR, who I was born the day he died, and I always, yeah, that's my only claim to fame, <laughs> and I. I feel like I was put here to it's to undo what he did, <laughs> but I'm not doing a very good job of it. But uh, ever since then, you know, yeah. little by little by little by little, the the government has grown. We have the education oh, yeah. group that Carter put in and whatever, and we're losing. And this has been the biggest assault on our method of uh, government mm -hmm. that I have. I mean, it really is scary. Mm -hmm. it, that's why I should have brought my scarecrow. Because I, people need to wake up 
to see what's actually going on in here. It's mm. not not a good thing. Not a good thing. Mm. Yeah. What else was I going to talk so, about? So, yeah, tell me about uh, your, your campaign a little bit, how you're uh, running it all from your <laughs> telephone in the house. The telephone in the mm -hmm. house, doing um, videos like this, all right. TV, and doing what sign waves. Uh -huh. And uh, I can't walk the, um, yeah, I can't the do streets. the walking to people. And so I'm hoping that uh, they'll remember me from the school board and uh -huh. that they will remember that I've run before. Uh -huh. I happen to be on the wrong side of the river, uh -huh. living on the wrong side of the, the river. But um, I'm really passionate about education. Drastic things need to be done. I need to get up there uh -huh. uh, to help form a better method of educating these kids because it's important. It's very, very important. Our, 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 as you can see, there are a lot of young people that think socialism mm -hmm. is a good thing. Now, I don't particularly think that socialism no. is a good thing because when we run out of your money, what do we do then? <laughs> what do we do then? So, um, uh, my well, I don't really understand. They don't understand socialism. They no. think it's so oh, nice and every everybody gets taken care of somehow. And they don't see uh, well, they, that it's half your money that goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why open the books will open your right, eyes. Right. Okay. You go there and you see that you know f the people in in um, uh, Seattle, the mm -hmm. policemen make six figures. You know, six figures for policemen. Uh, so it it it's anyways. Uh, I can't say enough about. I just love this country, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's done me good. Done, I've done by done well by it. So mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see that everybody has the same opportunities that I had. Uh, my parents didn't put me through college. Yeah. That three thousand dollars came out of my <laughs> pocket in the next ten years to put it back into the the federal government. The yeah. federal government loaned me that three thousand dollars, and it, it sounds absolutely ridiculous, doesn't it? Three thousand, but that was my last two years of of college. Uh -huh. um, I had and to now, work for everything. Now try to do <laughs> three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars is when you sign the paper. <laughs> Can you give me three oh, three thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. So um, I don't know. It's uh, I've just been very fortunate. I've had a wonderful career. I, I I landed in the right places at the right time, and I think it's uh, it, it all depends on you know mm -hmm. on and your attitude, and you're willing to work hard. I really worked hard. I really did. I'm telling you, forty years of you know maybe 40 50 hours a week 60 uh -huh. hours a week uh, but when you love it you don't yeah. care well you that's don't. right and running up there for uh legislation is a love really you yes. have to like it for a hundred <laughs> bucks a year <laughs> less taxes <laughs> yeah but i hear they get free meal every once in a while that's what i heard oh very rarely <laughs> very rarely oh well no uh, you get when, it when you have the people who want to influence you and in voting one way or another uh, to go out there and pay the cafeteria to pay for a spread. Uh -huh. well, that comes out, uh, you know, in the fall. Well, uh, there must be something to it for 400 people wanting to work for 100 bucks a yeah. year. It's and interesting. It is very uh, rewarding if you can work with the right, you know. Yep. Sometimes it gets a little frustrating. Well, <laughs> I know what frustration <laughs> is. I do know that. Um, but it, it would be one. It'll be fun to go up there uh and oh, good. Well, measure. people, let's vote for Elizabeth Francois. Absolutely. Uh, you're going on to the education committee? Uh, uh, I will try to, yeah, that's yes. Yeah. Uh, but I'm there sure are a few others that I, yeah. I want to get on the budget committee because I don't know how they're going to make up this $500 million deficit. You're going to work hard on that one. That one, uh, that one has to be hard, that very hard. Is. And, and uh, uh, $500 million, that was two two it months might ago. Be, it might be a billion. Oh. Well, can we end this conversation so I can go home and cry? <laughs> I can't imagine where it's going to come from. It happened in 2010. Uh, 10? So it can happen in 2020 again. Well, hopefully. I didn't make it in 2010. Uh, oh, I guess I wasn't running then. No, you I was on the running then, school board but that's then. when we made it, and uh, that's when we got the supermajority. So people yes. out there, get the vote out. Vote for the Republicans. If you want to find out more about the National Republicans, come to our meeting on the third week of the uh, third Thursday of the month. And uh, it's at the T old TD Bank in Nashua. So we're inviting everybody for I'll that. be there. Okay. So uh, please uh, go out and get your neighbors to vote for the Republicans. We need more to control it. And uh, so keep the Governor Sununu in so he doesn't have to do vetoes. 
like he has. <laughs> 57 last year and 27 this year. Wow. And uh, that's another story for another time. Another discussion. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, for thank time. you, Carl, for allowing me to come in and babble on like I have for, what, 30 minutes now? Yeah. So it's been fun. Fun. It's okay. always been fun. Thank you. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.